Hi, it's Jen back with the foundation paper piecing series. This time for December, we have been having so much fun with this series, Simply Sweet, and all the other fun things we've been doing all year long. This year has been a blur. As you know, our last couple months of foundation paper piecing have been kind of really cutesy. Our pumpkin with the jack-o'-lantern option, Tom the turkey for November, Christmas is a time of just elegance and sparkle and beauty, and I could not resist the timeless uh, customer favorite, all-time customer favorite collection from Stoff called what we call Stoff Christmas. And you're seeing that on the set with me, both to the right and to the left, and of course, in the project, our beautiful singing angel. When I think about Christmas, and I'd love to get your comments, I want to see a lot of engagement. What is your favorite part of Christmas? Is it the music? It is for me. Is it the lights? Is it the food? Is it the family? What is it? Traditions, going to church, Jesus, Santa. What is it for you that you just look forward to Christmas maybe more than any other time of the year as we do here? So as I said, I could not resist returning to something so spectacular and, and elegant and our singing angel our choir of angels, I could not resist uh, making that possible for you. So that's what you're seeing here. And again, we've done this now three, this is our third month in a row where we've added an applique element because our angel had to come to life. She had to be able to sing. So uh, what we'll be covering in this video is what you can expect in your kit, or if you're gonna be picking up the pattern, how you will manage those uh, applique shapes. So if you're just now stumbling on this, you don't know anything about foundation paper piecing, be sure to head back to our beginning series where we kicked off with actually our April project. It was a tulip and we step you through the process of foundation paper piecing. How do we use the add a quarter rulers? What is this paper all about? You're sewing on paper and folding it back and trimming and what is all of that? we unpack that for you. So even if you're a beginner, you'll absolutely be successful. Just like we've been doing, as you get your kit, or maybe you're just gonna be buying the pattern, you will be getting the foundation paper pieces to be able to do this twice. Once to practice, or if you're already a pro by now, and I bet you are, you'll be able to do one in your kit or maybe with your fabric at home and make another one to give as a gift. It is the season of giving, right? It's December. Stickers, we know people love stickers. We talk about this extensively in those early videos about how the stickers help us to cut the right fabric and get us organized. So as we're doing our project, we're staying organized and things are just clicking right along again. Check that out if that's foreign to you. So the foundation paper piecing on this is actually very straightforward. Let me just flip to those pages here. We really just have four sections, that's it. Her stunning dress, um, and of course her wings, both on the bottom quarters and then up above, and you're sewing that together. Again, check that out if that's foreign to you. Now that that's put together, we're like, well, our angel needs obviously a face, and she needs her beautiful hair and her halo. That's where the prefused laser cut applique comes in and where I feel these kits are an absolute value. Your backing's included, your hanging sleeve, your binding, everything's included. Be sure to pick that up. The only thing you'll need to add to that is a little bit of fusible fleece for the middle or maybe a small piece of batting. Okay, let's talk about the applique, really. That, let's, that's what's bringing our angel to life. Let's just flip to that page. All the things here being prefused and laser cut for you, she has a glitter halo here. We chose the, the prettiest fabrics we could find for this process. Her hair, her bun, the whole thing. There's something extra that I decided to do this month, and that's that our, our angel should have some blush in her cheeks, some life to her cheeks. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. In your kit, we've actually given you two faces, one to practice with so you build your confidence if you wanna try blushing her cheek. And if you don't wanna blush the cheek, you can just put the extra one aside and use just the one. I, I don't know if, we'll zoom in. You can see just a little bit of, of blushed cheek, and I wanna show you that process. We're gonna actually do that first, and then we'll assemble our, all of our applique together, and that's what would be going on, of course, 
to your foundation paper piecing background. So blush, right? If you have powder blush at home, that's all you need. You do not need to run out to a very expensive uh, craft store and get any high-end uh, type of dry uh, paint, so to speak. A women's blush works beautifully for that. I've done that many times. I have just a little bit of a color here so that's very earth tones. So if you want to have that earthier, you can do that. If you want that pinker, choose that. This is a brush that I've used in applique. It's great for things like this. It's just a Princeton applique brush available on our website. We'll have that in our links as well. And I encourage you to grab a piece of paper. I have done this before with a, like a paper towel and just the action of me kind of really kind of getting the fibers kind of blended into the brush, I ended up kind of almost destroying that paper towel and it ended up getting bunched up in my brush and it was a mess. So just a plain piece of paper is all you need. Again, I just have this handy today. It could be your blush from home. You're just gonna kind of get a little bit of this and you wanna begin to blend it well into your brush. Don't be shy about being pretty aggressive with the bristles. They are not, they're meant for this. This is what they're supposed to be doing, is, is really getting in there and getting a nice uniform blend so that really everything is evenly coated. Now you'll of course go to your face and you're just beginning to add that blush and starting to build that. Do a little bit on the, do less than you think. <laughs> I've learned that over the years. A little bit on both cheeks. If you want to add just a little bit of color above the nose, maybe just a little touch there. Once you're happy with that, and maybe, you, maybe you're happy with the first one, right? If you're like, oh, that went really wrong. You can, at this point, make the decision to maybe practice up here. If, you're, if you've decided, okay, I blew that, keep practicing around that face so that when you get ready to do the second one, it's exactly what you want. If you're happy with that, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll move on to the next step. And of course, that is building our site picture. So let's just look at this in case you didn't join us for our tutorial last month. And I'm gonna move the spinning mat. This is what we would use once we get all of our foundation paper piecing put together in the background and we trim the whole thing up. This is when the spinning mat comes into play. But for now, let me move that out of the way so I can bring our light box center stage and let's look at our layout diagram together. Just like before, pieces are saying that piece number one goes down first followed by piece two, three and four and so on and so forth. If you do see the dash line, that's saying that that piece lies behind. Piece seven lies behind eight, nine lies behind 10, logical. We will use this in combination with our Applefuse mat as we've been doing. And I like to get all of my pieces laid out. Make sure I understand the orientation and the sequence. You could also take a photo of the layout diagram you, if you're getting the kit, will not be using the tracing diagram because your pizzas have already been traced and cut out for you. If you are getting the pattern and doing your fabric from home, you'll need to go ahead and do the tracing diagram, get that uh, traced and cut out, and then you'll be using the layout diagram. By the way, if you are doing this from home and you're trying to get the little slits in the eyes, um, that's gonna be a little bit trickier because I'm gonna show you the process that we actually did. Those are not small pieces of applique. That is actually what we call a knockout, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's just first understand our layout. Piece one is her bun, her halo, and then we have her piece behind. I guess I am already at that place. We knew that the face, when we were designing this, we were like, okay, if we have slits for the eyes and her nose and her mouth, those pieces are so small that if we iron those down, it'd be nearly impossible for them to, to not just disappear. The, like there's not enough surface area for them to be glued to the background. So we decided to do something called a knockout. And as you can see, we went and took the time to cut these small 
when her eyes are closed, so she's singing, her beautiful little nose, and then her mouth is open as she's singing praises to our Lord Jesus. So we have taken that time. So there's a piece behind that's in black. You will layer that piece toward the top. Notice the piece in black is smaller and that's on purpose. When we first made it, it was the exact same size as her face. And when we stitched down her face, you can see just a little bit of that outline there. So we went back and we carved that out just a touch so that that is fully behind. And now you're not having to applique down her closed eyes, her nose and her singing mouth. That's already done for you. If you're doing this from home, you might try an X-Acto knife if you're gonna be using your own fabric. I'm not sure how you get that accomplished. Again, another reason to just pick up the kit. Obviously these fabrics are absolutely stunning and the convenience of having that done. You can be confident you'll have that able, uh, done and able to be displayed for Christmas. So that's our next step will be her two pieces for her face, followed by her hair and her arms and her beautiful dress, kind of the, the sleeves of her dress. Okay, so we will go ahead and use our Applifuse mat our light box. This is the wafer one I have and pieces are going to be going down. Iron is now on a medium heat and this is just the paint by numbers we've all done when we were kids. Do they have those anymore? Somebody leave me a comment and tell me they it exist. I, I want to know that still exists because as a kid I think that's really where I fell in love with art and it helps our kids be successful so they want to do it again and again. All right, that was piece two, three is up a little higher, and four. Oh. I'll just keep building our sight picture here. You know what, before I go on, because her hands kind of touch her mouth, you can see that, and that'll disturb where her face is. I'm going to iron this down, get that exactly where I want it. Got a medium heat and then we'll continue. And that's very common, especially as you get into applique blocks that have 30 pieces, 40 pieces. You're not going to lay everything out at once. You're going to do things in sections and then ultimately bring that together as a full sight picture. Whenever you start finding yourself having to readjust things, move things back in position, they're getting bumped, that's your clue. Okay, this is a great stopping point. Let me go merge those layers together. Okay, now we'll put her back in position. And we didn't even really have to do that, we can, because really her arms are a separate section, but we'll just put it right back in position so it looks the same to you from above. And here come her hands. So they just kind of touch her mouth, her chin kind of, as she's praying. Make sure I did that right. Actually, this one goes first, nine and 10. There's just a little bit of an overlap at the top. I don't think it matters too much. And I know we have our tweezers that sometimes just that extra pair of hands. Okay, and then we'll iron again. Oh, she's darling. The other thing you could do if you want to add a little bit of a blush almost in the arm to create kind of a highlight. I, was, I did toll painting years and years and years, okay, decades ago now. And this is when you really could add a lot of fun detail to projects. I'll show what I'm talking about. If we wanted to add just a little bit of a, almost a little bit of a blush in here, almost like a shadow. Be sure you're confident in doing this, right? Because now you only have one set of arms. <laughs> Make sure you're confident in that. And if you're not, obviously she's darling enough as she is with her little bit of our blush cheeks. Again, an option. If you're like, that totally stresses me out, skip it, skip it. That's just, that's just a bonus. Okay, once everything cools off, you've seen this magic trick before, but I'm going to show it to you again because it's easily one of my favorite magic tricks. 
is, and we won't be surprised, right? If that little bit of where the hands are touching the chin, if that came apart, and that's not a big deal, because it's barely touching, but we'll be very careful. And I think we could get it as a single unit. Look at that. All of those pieces are now a single unit. So let me move that out of the way. Move this out of the way. So you can see that once your applique is ready, your foundation is ready. We've trimmed it up with the spinning mat. Now you can go ahead and you could decide if you want to stitch with your four piece thread set, this is three 50 weights and one metallic, of course, we could not resist that. The soft Christmas fabrics all have a beautiful metallic to them. So that was a natural add on. You could go ahead and decide to stitch in the wings in her dress before you put on the applique or after. Either way, once you have that done, put her applique down and that's what this is for. This is for her beautiful hands, her face, and then that dark brown is for that deep auburn colored hair that she has. And of course, you're off to now stitching the rest of this down. We used our thread director. You've seen us do this before. The th you know, I've had challenges with metallic thread. A lot, in fact, I avoided metallic thread for years. And then someone showed me the thread director and the Schmetz metallic needle. It's a 9014 needle is what we have. That is an absolute magical combination. If you've never seen that, be sure to check out the video on how to use that thread director. It works on any machine. On the Bernina, we have a rotating extra spool pin at home. I have a much older machine that I'm sewing on and I have a spool pin that just fits in an extra slot. It works. You don't have to have a high-end machine for the thread director to work. It helps this beautiful metallic thread come off at the exact proper angle and the Schmetz metallic thread engineered to be compensating again for the metallic thread is just a wonderful combination. We did that top stitching with that and didn't have one thread breakage using that combination. What's the most important part? Get your kit. As we all know, these fabrics are made for such a limited amount of time. And of course, we make a limited amount of kits. Be sure to pick up your kit. We have some specialty notions in this one. And if you have any questions, again, maybe you're just seeing this the first time, head back to those earlier videos, Foundation Paper Piecing for April, where we show you that beautiful tulip and take the deep dive into how this process works how you do top quilting, how you do borders, binding, and even the hanging sleeve. Get the rest of these kits. They're disappearing in record time. Subscribe, hit the bell, let a friend know, and I'll see you next month as we continue our series.